Friends, trolls, countrymen, lend me your ears and welcome back to the Clap Back with Julie Roginski, where we come to bury the Twitter trolls and not to praise them. Come out and speak about the conservative hissy fit over New York City Shakespeare in the Park production of Julius Caesar. The main character bears a striking similarity to President Trump, who gets stabbed to death on stage, as Julius Caesar always does in every production. Bank of America and Delta have since pulled their sponsorships. So I dot tweeted an honorable tweet, quote, for God's sake, read the play. It's a pay on against assassination. What an asinine move by these companies. Oh, and I also tweeted a friendly reminder about a previous production of the play featuring a portrayal of President Obama as Caesar, who also gets stabbed on stage because the beware the eyes of March. He always does. So I tweeted out a refresher. The people of Twitter apparently went temporarily blind and not seeing that tweeting, quote, what if the president in the production was Barack Obama, played by an actor? The outrage would have been off the scale, hashtag hypocrisy, or quote, but Julie, how would you feel it had been Obama? I'd feel the same way, because it's happened time after time. They've had President Obama as Julius Caesar, they've had President Reagan as Julius Caesar, and President Bush, and I think even President Johnson, because the reality is art is art. What offends you does not offend others. And if you don't like it, don't go see the play. I'll take your ticket. I love the Delacorte. I love Shakespeare in the Park. I'll go see it if Obama is the Caesar being stabbed or Trump being stabbed. It's all about the First Amendment. People need to stop freaking out, my little snowflakes. If you don't like it, don't go see it. But let me give you a little refresher course on what happened to Julius Caesar and why this is so interesting. Julius Caesar was a great Roman general who presided over the demise of the Roman Republic and got stabbed on the Ides of March by a bunch of people led by Brutus, who was doing it to stand up for the ideals of the Roman Republic. There are two heroes, if you want to call them that, in the Shakespeare play. One is Brutus, who despite the fact that he killed Caesar, stood up for the ideals of the Roman Republic. The other is Mark Antony, who is Caesar's right-hand man, who comes and delivers a beautiful soliloquy and a eulogy to Julius Caesar. Ultimately, Shakespeare's message is that assassination leads to nothing good, that even if it's done for ideals that people believe in, it leads to complete disaster, which is in fact historically what ended up happening. The Republic ended with Caesar's death. Ultimately, Mark Antony got killed, or killed himself, I should say. Ultimately, all the conspirators who stabbed Caesar ended up dying a gruesome death, and the Roman Empire began by Octavian, who was known as Caesar Augustus ultimately, who was Caesar's nephew and the Republic, despite the assassination that all these conspirators fought to preserve, died anyway with them. So, the lessons from Julius Caesar are the following. It's a play. It has artistic license. It does not condone, but rather condemns assassination. So ultimately, come out and speak for the truth. She's my friend, faithful and just to me. But trolls and Trump say she was ambitious, but they have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with truth, and I must pause till it come back to me. I wish I could do this whole thing in iambic pentameter, but for Fox News, this is a clap back with Julie Roginski.